Hi students, welcome back. Saxon Math 7-6, we're at lesson 56. We've been talking about adding and subtracting fractions just like that in shorthand. And this time, John wants to give us three steps. I've been talking about the steps that we use, but these are John's steps. So let's take a look at what he says. In step one, we shape the fractions. We change the denominators. We, we find a least common multiple. We multiply, multiply, um, by a fraction equal to one, right? I draw my little soap by patty thing. And then we create new fractions. Well, they're not new, but they're renamed. They should be equal to the old fraction. Okay, so that's called shaping. Step two is to operate. And that's the simplest part. We simply add or subtract. We call addition and subtraction operations. So we actually, this is setting it all up. This is actually doing it. And then the last step, step three, is to simplify. And that's after we do the calculation, just cleaning it up as can be. So we're going to just work two examples of one addition and one subtraction for fractions, and we'll just talk about how shaping, operating, and simplifying are the three steps for that. Shaping also includes, oh, can I squeeze it in? Yes, making sure that we stack the problem. So here's an example. 56.1. John gives us the problem written like this. One half plus two thirds. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is shape. The first part of shaping is to stack. Right? Stack it. Okay, there it is. Now we need to find our least common multiple. When you do your homework, I want you to very clearly show the least common multiple. If you can look for the least common multiple in your head, that's fine, but I'd really like you to learn how to make some notes um, to show how you got it. So I take the bigger number, I multiply it by one, just in case we get lucky. Does two go into three? No, it doesn't. How about three times two? Again, I'm taking the bigger number and I'm multiplying it up to find the lowest number that they both can multiply into. Three times two is six. Two goes into six. I know it does because there's the two right there. So six is going to be our least common multiple. So that means we're going to have to adjust both fractions by a fraction equal to one, and I want to end up with six on the bottom. I'm going to draw this all out first. my least common multiple of six. That's what I want to appear on the uh, denominators of both of my new reshaped fractions. I'm still in the shaping phase. So I found my least common multiple. Now I'm ready to multiply by a fraction equal to one. Two times what equals six? Three. This has to be equal to one, so that has to be a three up there. One times three is three. Beautiful. Second one. Three times something equals six. That would be two. Two has to go here because this fraction has to be equal to one. Two times two is four. All right, the shaping has been completed. We have our new fractions and they have matching denominators and we are ready to go. So we can now operate, which means add or subtract. I always like to check because I got so distracted by all this, I've forgotten whether I'm adding or subtracting. I'm adding seven over Remember, the denominator stays the same. We simply add the numerators. 7 over 6 is a great final answer. If you want to turn it into a mixed number, I'm okay with that. If you want to leave it as 7, 6, but John writes it this way, just check to make sure that's correct. 
and inch final answer. Beautiful. Okay, that's the first example. Let's do one more. Ex remember again that our steps are shape, operate, and simplify. One, two, three, and it could also be abbreviated as SOS. Cool, right? Okay, so I look in the book, I find this. I say, John, come on now, we have to fix the shape of this. So I'm going to change it to one half minus one sixth. So draw my big line. Do it just like this, students. Now we have to find our least common multiple because we have to reshape these fractions so they have a matching denominator. I take my larger number, I multiply it by one, and I just check. Maybe my smaller number will fit in here. And look, it does. Two fits into six. Two times three is six. So I can use this as my least common multiple. This one, I'm not going to have to change. So what I do is I just draw an arrow, give myself some room up here, and just rewrite one six, because that one doesn't have to be reshaped. Two does, though. I'm going to have to multiply it by something top and bottom that will give me a fraction with 6 on the bottom. 2 times what equals 6? 2 times 3 equals 6. If there's 3 on the bottom, then I have to do 3 on the top. 1 times 3 is 3. And I can easily confirm in my brain that 1 half does equal 3 6. All right, that's the shaping. We now have two fractions with matching denominators. Second step is to operate. We are subtracting. Sometimes I even oh, excuse me. Sometimes I even check back in the book. So it's really easy to just write the wrong thing there. But it is indeed subtraction. So now I'm ready to subtract. I remember that when I'm subtracting, the denominator stays the same, and I just subtract the numerators. Two six. And I know I can divide that. Whoops. I meant one third, but I wrote one sixth. There's our final answer. Yay! So, the takeaway for this lesson is shape, operate, simplify. And you will be an adding and subtracting fraction maniac. Good luck with your homework for lesson 56.